Hello everybody, welcome. Good afternoon, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful afternoon here in central Pennsylvania. What am I doing? Well, I've just, um, I've just actually put some linseed oil on these keep practicing paddles. Which have a flat side, or I should say a smooth side, and they've got a pattern on this side. So um, I was out of them and I needed to get a few ready because I just put keep practicing on, on the handle you see. And then I put this linseed oil on. Also throwing stick I love the smell of linseed oil, don't you? It reminds me when I was a kid in England and uh, I went to a boarding school and we played cricket <laughs> and uh, I suppose it was my first smell of linseed oil but the cricket bats usually once a year or more anyway were rubbed over with linseed oil and I always remember the smell of linseed oil kind of reminds me of cricket and hot summer days and that kind of thing. This is a small neck tool You're getting down inside the neck of a pot or a bottle tool so you can just get in there under the shoulder you know what I mean. Anyway these are just really just drying here in the sun um, getting ready for me to mail them out. If you're interested in anything like a throwing stick, a paddle or a neck tool and some other bits and pieces go to my website simonleachpottery.com we've got tools there for you. Um, what I want to do now is just go inside and there's a few bits and bobs I need to do in there so I thought well you might as well join me it's just life as usual in the pottery, you know. Uh, we're going to end up doing a little... Hang on, maybe I ought to bring the tripod. Otherwise I'll be... I'll be... Um, I mean, hold a camera the whole time. So what's going on in here? Yes. I had a little job to do over here. So... I think you see it's good to show all aspects isn't it of some of the little things that we do in the pottery here well here on the on the bench I've got um, I've got some plaster bats this is this is the time of year when we do a bit of a spring clean in, isn't it in our house and in our pottery in our potting shed wherever and I'm actually needing to do that in here as well. Anyway, I've got these two plaster bats, they're actually dry. And down here I've got some clay that I have been waiting for me to... Um, let me just put the lights on a sec. A bit extra lighting anyway. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, in this bucket here I've got some recycled clay which has been waiting for me to down there to get out and put put out on the plaster. It's been soaking down here for quite some time, I think. I can't actually remember. Basically, and there's a bit of water on the top there which not a bad idea there's a bit of extra water here on the top just take that with a sponge just take that extra water away okay so what I'm going to do now is just take this soft clay 
which has got a nice smell to it because I I added some vinegar to it, which also always helps it to rot down nicely. It's like a nice, nice mature wine. It needs to mature a little bit and rot down, you know. I don't actually remember how long it's been here, precisely, but. If you're doing this, it's always a good idea, if you're going to dry, do what I'm doing here. Before you put the clay into the bucket with water, make sure it's dry. Okay, because dry clay absorbs water much faster than wet clay or semi-wet clay. It's also good when you're doing this to have it dry because if it's thoroughly dry then the clay is all at the same consistency and then absorbing the water and it absorbs it much better like that. So, just put this here. This will remain here for Probably till tomorrow morning I'll take it off, I imagine. Sometimes it's, you can turn the clay over, you know, let it um, So basically, I generally put it about that, that amount of thickness, which is what, a couple of inches, two and a half inches of thickness on top of, on top of the plaster bag. Okay. The next job is to to go and wash my hands, which I'm going to do it here. Yeah, it's the time of year, as I said, when we're trying to clean up the workshop a bit. It's a little bit, you know, after the winter, a little bit, a little bit messy. And so we're going to be just getting it in order. I've got here a bit of clay because there's something I wanted to make. And I'm actually, I'm actually getting together a list of things because I've got to go down to my clay supplier. There's things that I need. I've got, I need to get um, some more uh, kiln props for the kiln, some smaller ones. And I need some smaller shelves if they've got them. <clears throat> also, I need some more uh, bats for my Shimpo electric wheels. Um, you know, bats for throwing plates on and things like that, or things that you where you don't want to have to lift the pot off by hand because you're going to deform it rather. Certain things like flan dishes, um, certain shapes, plates. It's better to use a bat and then just cut it off and lift the lift the whole bat off. It's easier. So there's that I need to do. I've got just got a list here of things I'm 
adding to as I think of them. And then in a week or so, I shall go down to my local clay supplier. I need to I need to get some more clay. And uh, yeah, I gotta. I'll write down here as well glaze materials because I need to. Over in that corner, I've got my supply list of things that I use. Um, typically, things. Let's go over there and have a look. While we're talking about it, there's nothing like over here in yonder corner. I've got here a list of iron oxide, you see, spodumene, flint, EPK, that's kaolin, china clay, uh, fire clay, potash feldspar, whiting, nephsi, etc. And um, Actually, there's something I wanted to add to that, something called Wallace tonight. Just to remind me, Wallace tonight. I just put it there just as a. Um, yeah. So I should check through everything there and then complete my list. So, yeah. I actually wanted to make something. And um, yeah, let's just maybe I'll take the clay over to the wheel, a big lump of it, and um, take take what I need because I'm not exactly sure what I do need in terms of um, in terms of quantity at the moment. You probably wonder why I've got the why I've got the cutlery here. Huh. Well yeah I've just got some clay here. We're not gonna use all that but um, What I actually wanted to do was to make a, a cutlery drainer. A what, Simon? Yes, a cutlery drainer. So, because I don't have one at the moment and everything, you know, in this gets, we do the dishes and it goes into this little pot and then invariably the pot falls over. It's a nuisance. So what I need to do is make something which is going to be deep enough, wide enough, etc. I wanted just to talk about that just just briefly. Um, so yeah um, Turn on my scales. Dee, 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 dee. I'm just trying to think in my mind how much clay I'm going to need to do it. And so I think I'm going to put here two and a half pounds actually. I'll try two and a half pounds. So. This has already been 2.4. Yeah, that'll do. It's two and a half pounds of clay. Okay, just going to put this back over here and put it under a wrap. So, so here's the clay. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to give it a few turns before I I throw with it. A few turns. 
What do I mean by that? I mean I'm just going to knead it a few times, give it a few turns. Ah, it's picking out dry clay that's left in these. This particular wheel, the rings here on the on the wheel head here are rather deep. So clay collects in there and it gets dry, you see. And then of course you put a piece of wet clay on and it picks out all the clay, all the dry clay into the Okay, so I'm just going to use the wheel head as a as a wedging area here, you see. Because I can just put my right foot just put my right foot here on the wheel so that stops the wheel from going around, you see, and then I can use this to, to wedge on or knead on. Sometimes with individual lumps of clay, you saw I'd kneaded up a cone of clay and I just pulled this off the top. Well, you know, sometimes it's it's good to knead each individual lump, I think. It gets the gets the the clay working in a spiral, you know? Because we're throwing in a spiral. You see, so now I've done that so that all the platelets are now a little bit wound up, you see, like that. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Ah, so... Yeah, so cutlery drainer, and I need to just measure this. Yeah, well, it's about five and three quarters, so it needs to be six inches tall. I don't know about you, but you know, when I was growing up, my we never had a um, we never had a, a machine to wash the plates and the dishes. Not like you lot. <laughs> Maybe you didn't have one either. But anyway, we, we never had one. You know, when I was growing up in the, I suppose the sixties and the seventies. Yeah, there were people who did have machines for washing the dishes, but a lot of people didn't have them. My parents didn't have one. My mum always wanted one. <laughs> I always wanted my mum to have one as well because I always used to get roped into doing the washing up or doing the drying up or, you know. So, I'm a skilled washer, a wash, a still a skilled washer upper. Actually, I'm not really, but. So, what I'm going to do is. The thing that you see, there's certain, there's certain things to consider here. Let's just talk about the cutlery drainer. What, from a practical point of view, what are the considerations for a cutlery drainer? Well, it needs to be a strong, stout container. It doesn't want to be so tall. It doesn't want to be so tall that everything disappears down inside it, does it? It wants to be so that everything can still the handles stick up above. Generally when you're doing the dishes the spoons and the forks and the knives get tend to get thrown in rather when you're doing it by hand. So that means that the bottom here needs to be a little bit thicker than you would normally throw it for a normal pot. The other, the other thing to consider of course is that the bottom, the bottom of the pot here has got to have drainage holes in it. So in order for the water to drain away, okay, let's take a, a bat here to show what I'm talking about. Imagine this bat here is the, is the countertop, okay? In order for the water to drain away, this has got, needs to be raised up, doesn't it, a little bit? So the water can drip away, otherwise if it's down like that, the water won't drip away. So, 
It really needs to be not that shape, it actually needs to be a bit wider than that, I think. And very slightly, very slightly flared. Probably, probably have a, a rolled rim for durability. It's a very functional item, isn't it? A, a cutlery, cutlery drainer. For coning up, centering down. I've given a little bit of thought to this, you see, ahead of time. I'm going in now, so I'm being careful to make sure that this is a bit thick in the base, where we've got a good, um, we've got at least a half an inch there, all right? So that'll do. So widening the base. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Now, you know, I don't know, to be honest, whether I've got enough clay here. It might be that, might be that I need to to add some more. So we're just bringing the clay up in an easy way. Good to be working in the sunshine. It's I don't know what the time is. What is the time? 25 plus 6. So we're basically just, from a making point of view, we're thinking about a cylindrical shape. It's very slightly flaring, that's okay. Dee -dee -dee -dee. the height of that. Well that's about six and a half at the minute. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll, we'll roll the rim now. Don't wait to the last minute to roll your rims, roll them a bit before. That will have, that will have, we would have lost a bit of height, weren't we? Okay, well, we considered some of the functional aspects of this. You could think, well, well what about the beauty side of it? Well, maybe we'd give it a bit of, a bit of belly there. Just, just bellying him out of touch. I'm going to widen them a bit in there in the foot. Let's take a measurement again. Well, that's about six inches at the minute. And you see, now that's a teaspoon. It's a dessert spoon. Scissors, yeah. Remember, we've always got to make things a little bigger, haven't we? Because we have to allow for shrinkage.
Right, throwing stick. We just clean the base here. I'm going to put an undercut as usual. Clean some of the slurry away there. It looks, <coughs> it looks like a flower pot, doesn't it? It looks something. It looks very, very ordinary. And maybe actually the outside here, when it's dry, we'll impress it with something. In fact, maybe I'll make it. I'll smooth it off a touch at this stage. Using my throwing stick, slightly at an angle, pushing up against it using my hand on the inside to push the clay against the stick as I move it up, you see? You need this hand on the inside to push that inside clay out to the stick. And that just helps to clean the form because if I'm going to impress it, I don't really want to have throwing rings there. Did I leather it? I think I did, but we'll do it again anyway. Of course, the using the throwing stick against the side is going to make it a little easier to lift off. My throwing cut-off wire, you'll see, is not very long, is it? but it's long enough. You don't want a great long one where you've got to wrap it around your fingers. Get it the right length to start with and you won't have to do any of that fussing around. Okay? We're going to have some of those on the website by the way soon. So taking this so I can use my thumbs to control the wire. Have you ever cut halfway through a pot and suddenly the wire slips out from under your fingers and cuts up into the bottom of the pot. You don't want that, do we? So we want to control, control the wire. So hang it down on, the, or down on the wheel head and straight across like that. Voila. Okay, now, all right, it's a fairly, a fairly straightforward kind of shape, isn't it? Nothing too fancy. Um, yeah, maybe we'll lift this fella off and I'll put him actually on this, on this bat. Are we still in the picture? This is the question. Ooh, the evening shadows are, are casting there. Yeah, okay, we can put him there. I'll, I'll, I'll go f further with this, this cutlery drainer. Um, with you when it comes to finishing it off and putting the holes in and putting some feet on it. Okay, so I'm just going to lift him like that and put him down there. All right. Now, by nature, cutlery drain a little bit on the heavy side, which you want because you've, you're allowing a little bit extra clay and you want it to be robust. That's important. So, that's that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, go to my website, simonleachpottery.com and um, if, you go, if you go to the website, you'll see, um, if you go down the left-hand side, You'll see there we have a section where we're now offering live webcam classes. So that's webcam instruction. So if you if that's something that interests you, um, and you'd like me to instruct you in your home with your own wheel, um, then then go there and check it out. You will need though uh, your own a separate USB webcam. Okay, you will need a decent fast internet connection 
and you will need adequate lighting. All right. So you're going to bring your your laptop and your separate webcam. Now, a lot of laptops these days have got the webcam embedded in the top of the screen. Okay. It'd be better if you had a separate webcam on a cable, a USB one, and I recommend a high definition one. So you need to get that set up and get your wheel set up and get ready ready to go um, if you sign up for a class um, there's a list of there's a list of instructions there recommendations um, some of those things I've already mentioned just mentioned to you but I'll repeat them there um, it's a new it's a it, it, it's a new way of of teaching I've not really done a lot of this kind of teaching before I have done some um, and it's something we're not, generally we're not familiar with with doing uh, certainly not in in pottery anyway so it'll be I'm sure it'll be fun so if it's something that interests you uh, maybe you can't get get away to a workshop um, and this is a way where you can you can work in your own familiar surroundings on your own wheel using your own clay all right it's not a case of going to a new a new studio with people who you don't know and you might be feeling a bit nervous there won't be anybody watching you except me <laughs> um, Anyway, this month of April, we're just starting off with a few classes a week, and um, just to just to get into the feel of it uh, for for both for me as a teacher and for you as students. So um, yeah, check it out anyway, and check out the, the the schedule. There will be a link below in the little bit of text where there, there is some writing and it, in that in that little area there there will be a live link so if you click on that it'll take you straight to the page where you can check out the the listings of workshops that I'm offering into your studio um, there's not very many, the classes at the moment for this month of April are only for four people. That's going to be expanded and the price will come down a bit for the classes. But, uh, yeah. But you can either go to the, my website and you can pick up, the, pick up the link there and get to the Powhow page or you can pick up the link there in YouTube in that little area where there is the description, the writing. Okay? It will be, it will be good to, to do this, I feel, and uh, it should be fun. <laughs> Yay! So, what have I got, else have I got to say? Nothing other than to KP your FB. KP or FB, which means keep practicing your function with beauty. <laughs> hey, see you around. Bye bye. Did it, did.